coming up today on the Nice Guys on Business. I also make you look at blueprints, the subconscious of where you're operating from. So how did you deal with money when you were young? How did your parents deal with money? What did you see in your household? Was it spoken about? Was it not? Was it used as a controlling factor? So those are some of the first steps I ask people to really reflect upon because a lot of your behavior with money is the fruit of those blueprints. Today on the Nice Guys podcast, fencing, fighting, torture, revenge, giants, monsters, chases, escapes, true love, miracles. Oh, no, that's the Princess Bride. Go from where you are now to where you could be. Get expert tips to grow your business, to be more productive and more efficient. Whether you're trying to build influence, grow your community, or make it rain. Best-selling author of Nice Guys Finish First, Doug Sandler, can lead the way. The Nice Guys on Business is produced by Turnkey Podcast Productions. Now, here's your host, Doug Sandler. Nice Guy Community, podcast host, speaker, conference organizer, best-selling author, and all-around awesome person, Janine Ledford, is here and as our Nice Guys guest today. She shares her gift of helping you right-brainers out there understand that money shouldn't be stressful. It should be a tool to help you live your true destiny. And Janine's best-selling book, From Debt to Dynasty, Creating Financial Freedom from the Inside Out, she sets the theme that you can get a hold of your debt, increase your income, and if you're creative, you're kind of right brain like I am, thinking and sending your money on a mission for a great purpose. Janine uses her own unique stories of financial literacy and a lot of humor thrown in there to highlight the issues so many are facing with debt, feeling stuck, and knowing not how to to move with their creative ideas actually to make money. Hang on throughout the show because this woman has some great ways for you to hear more, see more, and be more. Welcome, Janine, to the Nice Guys on Business podcast. Thank you for having me. I, I love having you here. And I've had like three or four cups of coffee this morning, so I'm going to go at a million miles an hour. So you just stop me at any point where you feel like, hey, Doug, can you just slow down a little bit because I'm, <laughs> I'm not quite with you right now. I got, so, I got so excited as I started uh, doing some research about you. Bestseller Publishing had sent you over to me as a guest, a uh, potential. And uh, of course, I welcomed you immediately once I saw that not only were you a podcast host, but you have live events. You live not too far from me. And, uh, and, all of, and not only that, but you have a great book too. But all of these things, it's like, can you be creative and can you be right-brained and actually still make money? So can I ask you that question right out of the gate before you even tell me your background? Sure. Well, actually, I'm on a mission of redefining that. So a lot of us think that you're either left brain or right brain, but the research is showing you're both brains. Creativity actually happens in both hemispheres, and it's not really uh, the artistic parts over here and the logical parts over on this side, even though like math and re reading do predominantly happen on one side, but the creativity part, and not necessarily the artistic part, but the creativity part, innovation, Producing new ideas happens on, in both sides. So I'm really trying to um, clear up that misconception that you may be a little bit more artistic, but you're actually whole brain innovative thinkers. We all are. Well, I, I, do, I do have, uh, um, let's say, fast lane thoughts of, wow, wouldn't it be great? And I try to keep everything in a budget. That's definitely my left brain coming through because I know that because I tend to, to gravitate more towards creative and big picture thinking and I, talk, and I think in pictures, I don't think in words. You know, I, I know that my, uh, my girlfriend commonly says to me things like, you know, do you remember exactly what I said or do you remember what they said? And I said, I don't remember what they said, but I remember the feeling it gave me. You know, it's yeah. like, okay, yeah. that's totally totally like a right brain or that's a more of in the creative world. But I understand that I have that, not issue, but I have those characteristics. So I have to kind of push myself into that left brain thinking, let's call it, of mm -hmm. I got I to create a budget. I have to create a task list. If I don't do that, I'm not going to be any good. So maybe share a little bit of, of your background to, to mm -hmm. talk to our community about what you've gone through to understand and really just uh, basically capitalize on the concept of, wow, creatives can actually make money. Sure. I am an educator by trade. I have my degree in psychology from UCLA, a master's of education from CSUN, Cal State North Northridge in Southern California, and a certification in financial coaching. So I just, and I've taught you know elementary school and the music art, artistic pro program. And I also uh, taught 
at CSUN as a lecturer of how to integrate creative arts. So a lot of different fields kind of being smushed together mm-hmm. gave me a great foundation to, to do what I'm doing now basically. Um, and like, like a lot of your, your guests, I got hit with the whole student loan mm-hmm. wave <laughs> mm-hmm. of like what ha- happened. And as a 30 year old, I found myself in a hundred thousand dollars worth of debt on a teacher's salary and not knowing what went wrong. I got my education. I played by the rules, but yet I was still financially inept and just struggling. So that was the impetus of what you see today and from debt to destiny what is the book that i i wrote so when did you realize that not only was this um something that you had as your i guess as your uh, i don't want to say it's a curse at all but that you know getting into a hundred thousand dollars of debt it certainly is never a, a, an easy for position for anybody to ever feel like they can climb out of so when was it that you realized or maybe it was on the other side that after you got through it that you realized that hey i actually have a skill here or a gift in helping other people do what i have just done which is just kind of rise up out of the out of the uh, the, uh, the the weight of all of this debt sure I realized, well, my, my tag, tagline is your creative health affects your financial wealth. And I got the intuition and the aha moment that, wait, first of all, I'm lacking financial literacy. So that had to be, I had to fix that right away. And that's just, you know, learning how finances work, learning how credit cards work, how interest can work for you or against you. So once I got that down, I decided to look within me and I call them now, I have this program called uh, the Destiny Diamond and just how I had these diamonds of creative gifts inside of me that I can actually reframe, look at differently and they can turn into revenues of income. So I really just took inventory of my strengths. You know, I'm a good educator. So I looked at tutoring. I love photography and I love storytelling through video and pictures. So instead of me just doing that for fun, I started to get odd jobs and brought in more income that that way. Uh, I didn't know I I could write. (laughs) So so I I just, you know, started writing and then I got just out of nowhere, just a book deal came. And so that brought in extra money. And I just really just, yeah, reframed the things that I love to do. And they ended up bringing in, ended up being multiple streams of income. So that's what I do now. I teach the youth and adults to take a look at their strengths, things that you may think is just you, you know, like, oh, I'm a good listener. Oh, you know, I take action very well. Those could be looked at as pe- people will pay you mon- money mm-hmm. to either teach them how, them how to do that or to just, you know, capitalize on you doing it well for them in their areas of need. You know, what's really interesting is, and again, Nice Guy Community, we've talked about this all the time. Someone does not have to be 30 steps down the path further than you in order for you to learn from them. And if you feel like, okay, well, Janine just went through this or she has gone through this recently to get rid of $100,000 in, in student loan debt. Uh, well, how is how can she really share this information with me? She might not be 30 steps down the, the path from me. Even if she's two or three steps down the path from you, I'll tell you, the book From Debt to Dynasty, Creating Financial Freedom from the inside out, this could be a really good way for you to to at least begin your journey and getting out of where you are right now. You know, one of the things that the books or several of the things that the books will show you is how to stop debt from ruining your life. Obviously, that's a good one. How to prevent high interest rates eating away at your savings. How to avoid the salary penalty of a low paid job. How not to get suckered into worse deals on cars and other expenses, of course. How to deal with debt and decrease your loans while in college. How to invest while still paying off debt. How to stop living a money stressed life and start living a life of purpose. I know that's got to resound and, and, and really strike a chord with many of you in our community that have shared with me their your struggles to deal with the debt that you're in. And many of you, even through some of our inexpensive coaching um, uh, you know, um, offers that I have made, I've talked to a number of you through some free offers that I've made. And the biggest thing that, that holds people back, believe it or not, again, nice guy community, is I can't afford this right now. And let me tell you something. If you're 40 years old, 50 years old, if you're 30 years old and you're letting a $497 course or a $19 paperback, if that is something that you can't afford, you need to make a change. And many of you understand this. You know where I'm coming from. I'm coming at it from a position of love. I'm not coming at it from a position of wanting to chastise you or share with you or shame you. I'm coming at this from a position of it's time to start getting out of where you are right now. From debt to dynasty, this could be the book that changes everything for you. 
I know that Janine is, is funny. I know that she's experienced. I know that she's gone through this. And look, she took the thing that was her biggest challenge. And I think you said you now have a, a certification in financial. What was it that you said? A certified in financial coaching. Yeah, certified in financial coaching. I mean, she was someone that was in $100,000 in debt at one point, and now she's certified in financial coaching. This is somebody that had took, taken her probably one of her strongest or biggest um, challenges, and she turned it into opportunity. So again, I don't mean to, I don't mean to, to go off on a monologue with this, uh, Janine, but I just think it's so important that people understand where they're sitting, that struggle, they don't have to sit there forever. Don't so many right brain, pe- or I'm sorry, I know you use the whole brain, but don't so many <laughs> creatives, don't they feel like they just, this is their destiny to sit in this their entire life? Well, one point you brought in is I had to, once again, you know, going back to the reframing, it's when I realized that we were, at, I call it my rock bottom moment, crying on the, the carpet with these bills in my hand, wondering how I got there. I had to reframe my term investment. So my husband and I went and invested $99 to take a financial course, you know, $99 that we did not have. And yes, people aren't aware of what the term opportunity cost means. And so that $99 ended up helping us go on $100,000 worth of debt removal, Mm -hmm. which was student loans, car debt, credit card debt. It was, you know, the total package. But we don't understand the value of information and the value of acting on information, you know, um, knowledge, understanding, and then the wisdom. Wisdom part is the acting on the information that you acquire. So yes, your co- your your courses, the coaching, the book, a lot of people are living these, you know, they call it what, quiet desperation lives because they're not taking action to get yeah. the information. And they just see the bits, the sticker tag and they don't see the opportunity cost of what this looks like actually applied in my life. Absolutely. You know, I, I, um, I met with someone, I can't remember who it was, but they were speaking at a, uh, at a conference. And one of the things that they said, are you, are you reward focused or are you risk focused? A lot of people don't look at the rewards. They only look at the risk of what would happen if I spent $99, $497, whatever it is to, uh, to take action and move on to, uh, on to something. They're looking only at the risk and not the reward that would say, if I did invest $97, $200, whatever it is in the program or products or services, if I did invest my time. This is not an investment in that uh, in that you're making anyone on the other side of it rich. This is an investment in in you, and you've got to understand whether it's a book uh, or a program or a conference or anything like that. Uh, it is so critical to be able to to uh, to invest in yourself, not in the not in the speaker, not in the author, not in the person that is creating and presenting this program to you. You're investing money in you, in yourself. You're not making someone else rich by, by paying them. You're actually investing in yourself. One point that I do want to bring up is the quality of ideas. You know, I think we are sleeping on the power of the idea. And, you know, my training and my, my, my courses and all the things that I'm developing right now, my curriculum is how do we help people produce more quality ideas and then the courage on acting on that? What does that look like? So the man with the Netflix idea, I don't think he was the only one who had the idea of, hey, going to Blockbuster sucks. You know, I got to get it in, in my car and, mm-hmm. and I get fine for, for being late, you know, and right, all this other right. stuff that you and I dealt with. But, you know, he had an idea. What if, you know, how do I break through the lines of what culture and society has built up for me? What if I do this? And then to actually act on it and build a team and, and take the risk. You know, he probably put money into this idea. I, I left my full-time job with health benefits of my classroom in June. I'm taking the risk to build this company to help people get back to their creative source and to learn how how creativity is a skill like typing. No one is born with the with the with the um, skill to type. You that's something you you learn. We are born with creativity, but we are have the skill and the responsibility to grow it. And with metaphorical thinking and other activities that I do in my pro- programs, you can train your brain to produce ideas and to see what other people are missing. And so, um, yeah, we need to get back to the quality of producing great ideas and the courage on acting on the right ones. So Janine, this may be a question that it has a, a simple answer for you, but I would encourage you as you, as you answer this, just to think about how it may be fitting into the, into the world of, uh, of somebody that uh, may be, again, two steps behind you on the path. I'm really curious, what 
symptoms somebody might have when they realize, am I living this? Uh, I don't care if I'm right brain, whole brain, left brain. I don't care if I'm a creative thinker. I just know that I got debt. <laughs> you know, so talk to me about the, um, some of the symptoms somebody might have to realize, uh, hey, I am a candidate for something that you can provide a solution to. Sure. Like I mentioned before, my, my background and my degrees are in psychology. So in, in the book, I really make you look at that aspect as, as well. And I also make you look at blueprints, the subconscious of where you're operating from. So what did you, how did you deal with money when you were young? How did your parents deal with money? What did you see in your household? Was it spoken about? Was it not? Was it used as a controlling factor? So those are some of the first steps I ask people to really reflect upon because a lot of your behavior with money is um, is the fruit of those blue blueprints. Another thing going back to, to, to the psychology aspect is the emotional part. So we had to once again reframe, you'll hear me talk about that a lot because that's a big part in you being successful in life. But my husband and I had to look at our numbers and not be scared of them. Hey, you know, it's $100,000. Okay. Um, how do we chunk it? How do we do psychological ch steps to to make it work. So, you know, we chunked up the debt. We celebrated when things were paid off. We incorporated the debt snowball, which is um, putting your debt in order from smallest balance to largest balance. And then we incorporated the interest rate. Now, some people do one or the other. They put their debt in order from interest rate, and that's fine. But sometimes if you have a big debt with a high in interest rate, you don't get a win. So the psychological part is getting the small debts out the way first, you get wind, you get that psychological feedback, you sell it, you celebrate. But if two debts were around the same amount, we looked at the interest rate and adjusted that that way. Another part that I talk about through story form, um, and I'm an ele elementary school teacher by heart. So, um, <laughs> yeah. so my stuff is easy to read because don't forget, Albert Einstein said, if you can't explain it to a six-year-old, you really don't know it yourself. So the fact that I work, <laughs> I spent my whole career explaining things to six-year-olds, you'll see the book is easy to di di digest. Mm -hmm. But um, I, um, I wait, what was I saying? <laughs> well, you were, he you were heading down the path of just making it, making it really easy to understand about debt and how debt works and how uh, you know, finance works. The communication aspect. Now I say, you know, sadly, I think some of the financial world, especially when you get into investments, a lot of the language is difficult, so which kind of blocks a lot of pe people out if they don't have access to that type of jargon and esoteric lang language. So, um, but communication is key. So, you know, I called one of my credit card bills and I was just like, you know what, this is too much. The interest is like a hundred and $15 and the payment was like $146. So only like 30 bucks was going to principal. We'll never get this paid off. And they ended up working with us. They lowered our interest rate to 4% from like 27. Um, the payment came down. And as long as we paid on time, it, it was done. So just reaching out, they'd rather you reach out rather than ignore them and have it charged off. So keep that in mind. And they have people there, you know, um, to help. So just making the point to communicate and also making sure you don't set it and for, forget it. A lot of times we pay on bills mm -hmm. and you can call on a regular basis. I, I try to do it at least once a year saying, Hey, do you guys have any specials, any deals, you know, your internet, your cell phone, your car insurance, I realized I could put myself on my husband's car insurance because I have a teaching credential or if you're a full-time student or if you're a veteran, analyze your life and see if there's any cool points that you, you can hit and just make sure you stay in contact and see if you're getting the best deal. Because a lot of times they want you to just pay it every month or every year and not really think about it when you could really negotiate. A negotiation is a good skill to have no matter what field you're in. So I love that you took um, the things that potentially could have been challenges in your life and you turned them into um, a strength. You turned it into a thing that you actually are going to take a much deeper dive and educate yourself and learning about not only debt, but how to teach others how to do the same thing and still having that creative uh, that creative mindset as well. Talk about some other outlets for you because I know you have a podcast. I know you have a conference coming up. So maybe uh, e take either one of those that you like, but uh, uh, again, I'd love, to sh I'd love to share a little bit more of, uh, of your skill set with my community. Sure. I do have a podcast because once again, I'm an educator and uh, there's a man named Pat Flynn and he shared a story about, you know, he was just podcasting. There's a man in Sweden who broke bo both of his legs and he was in the hospital and he just started listening to Pat's podcast. And that really 
spoke to me about the information I have. It's great for me and I can help people in my, in my, um, community, but can I, um, help people around the globe? Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I started the podcast called create and, and grow, grow rich. Um, of course it's off of the, you know, spun is spending off of the, or thank you, off of the title. Um, <laughs> yes. Thank you. Grow rich. I was like, why? Hey, it works. I think about writing a book with the same title, but the main impetus of this podcast is making sure people understand that your creative gifts, your ability to think of new ideas can be hitched to the entrepreneurial wagon and brought to market if you have the right skills. And I also use this podcast to show that creativity, not necessarily artistry, but creativity, the process of problem solving with relevance, value, and novelty is in every field. So I have nurses, I have entrepreneurs, I have educators, I have people from all walks of life talking about what creativity looks in their field. Now, I am separating creativity from artistry, but I am still a huge proponent of the artistic world and the artistic methods. I, I was um, a musician growing up. I used to play the trumpet starting fourth grade. My twin played the bassoon and um, my sister played the flute. So we all had musical instruments growing up. But, you know, I spoke with this one musician man who was an entrepreneur and he was like, my music background forces my brain when I'm in business to connect the unconnected. And as people are talking, I'm seeing things in the connections because that's what mu music is. You have to process rhythm, tempo, melody, structure, all at the same time. And what people don't know is music actually interacts both halves of the, the both hemispheres at the same time, which strengthens your corpus callosum, which is that bridge between the both hem hemispheres. And when you're thinking about creative ideas, it's about ideas getting back and forth between both hemispheres as quickly as possible. If your corpus callosum isn't strengthened or isn't, isn't as robust as it could be, it's kind of like traffic. And you're in Southern California, so you know the 405 and the 101. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So if you don't take the time to invest in some type of artistic um, expression, you're not giving your your brain that that creative workout. So even though creativity and artistry I separate, I, I am a still huge proponent for artistry and as early in life as possible. If you didn't get started earlier in childhood, that's okay. Start now because it will help you in all areas of life. So kudos to Janine for not only uh, sharing and, and overcoming the obstacles that she has had, but for using corpus callosum t uh, twice in, in, a, in a podcast. Never once has it been brought to the nice guys, but you have used it twice now successfully. <laughs> well, wait, well, way to go. <laughs> way to go. I love the brain. I love the brain. <laughs> hey, so let, let's move on to your, uh, to your conference that you have coming up because I believe that this will air in advance of the conference and uh, I'd love to help support it and, and share a little bit more information with our community. So talk to me about um, the event itself and, and you know, what you guys are putting together in, uh, in LA. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. It's the first of many, but you know, once again, it's all about taking action. I have great ideas, but I'm the person that's like, hey, let's just do it. If one person shows up or a hundred, we're going to do it and we're going to do it well. And so this conference is called uh, Create 2020. We're in a foundational year and it's business boldness and beyond. And one issue that I found, I'm a part of the school system, K-12, and I've think we're doing a good job on the academic side, but I don't think we're really tooling our students well on the, how to effectively communicate, how to effectively network and build your resources that way, and how to effectively bring things to the market and have entrepreneurial skills if you choose to go that route, whether or not you choose to go to a four-year university. So this was my answer to that ish, issue where I'm targeting, you know, 20 to 35-year-olds and people who just wanted to really upskill in those areas on, okay, how do I affect Net, network and use link. I have a LinkedIn specialist coming. I have a communication specialist coming. I have um, um, a few art artists as well. A man who choreographed for the Super Bowls. Hey, the Super Bowl's coming up, right? Um, so he has worked with the top artists in th the entertainment field, but he's bringing the thought processes on how do you be a great improvisational on in, improv, in, you know, an improvisational person in the art world, but how do you also be a great improvisational person in business? You know, the top CEOs are the ones who can think on their feet and make things happen. So bringing those skill sets, crossing them over from the artistic world into the business world, what does that look like? It is in North Hollywood, which is great because, hey, we're in Hollywood. Who doesn't <laughs> want to come, come to that area? Absolutely. Um, on 
February 22nd, 2020 in North Hollywood. Um, we have limited seat seating, so you definitely want to get your tickets now. I even lowered the price a little bit because I really don't want it to be a hindrance to, you know, younger people who might want to come and learn and they may not have a huge financial um, resource you know, to, to pull, pull from and just, yeah, we're bringing some top thinkers into one place to give you the skills that you need to survive and to thrive in 2020 and beyond. So the, the conference is called create conference. It's uh, I'll put a link in the show notes, nice guy community. So you have it, but it's create dash conference.com February 22nd, uh, just coming up in the next couple of weeks as of the airing of this, it's in North Hollywood. I really encourage you to uh, get there. I'm going to try to figure out how I can get there as well because uh, it's just down the street for me and uh, I, I may I may hit you up for a speaking spot in that I know I'm putting you on the spot here while we're doing the podcast recording but uh, you know I, I might be able to deliver I'm hoping a couple people to the conference I think that's got to be worth a, a podium position but I don't want to don't want to pressure you into answering that yeah right we're going to see what we <laughs> could do I, I'm thinking it's looking really good especially if you can help us just get out the word because this is really my heart is just to making sure our community members really have the skills that they that they need and we can't be lying to to them just saying a four-year university degree is going to get you the successful life you you need. That's not the case anymore. There's some other skills you're going to have to improve upon and we're here to give that to you. So I would normally say, okay, guest, share with me some action items that I would want to give to my community who's listening out there. But I've just given you three nice guy community. You can either listen to Janine's podcast, uh, the Create and Grow Rich podcast. You can buy her book, which is uh, available through uh, Amazon, but I'm also going to put a link in the show notes for that and the podcast as well. Or if you want to, if you're uh, a touchy feely person, you want to be out there and seeing things in action, get to the Create Conference event, create conference.com on February 22nd. So we have three really good choices for you to pick for how you want to take action here. And, and whether you're audio, whether you're, uh, whether you like reading or whether you are someone that likes live events, Janine has all three of them. So thank you for sharing your message and everything that you're all about, Janine. I'm excited to get some positive feedback from my community. Awesome. And one last point I want to make with the create and grow rich title. It's mm -hmm. you hear the word rich and you automatically think the financial and financial stability is really important um, to live, to live, you know, a great, great life. But I also extend it into just have a rich experience, have be rich in relationships, be rich in purpose and make sure your money has a mission. So that's really the extension of the create and grow rich mindset and how your creative health affects your financial wealth and your wealth in other areas as well. Well said, Janine, and thank you for sharing that uh, that last message there because I think that's so important. Too many people associate rich with money, and it is, can be rich in so many different ways. W rich with great relationships, rich with money, uh, you know, rich with the experiences that you have. So, Janine, thank you for sharing your message, and thanks for being on the Nice Guys today. It was amazing. Have fun and create. Nice Guy community, never underestimate the power of nice. Again, special thanks to Janine Letford. All of her information, including access to her book, access to her conference, and access to her podcast will be right there in the show notes. Steve O'Brien, go ahead and take us out of here. For the Nice Guys on Business, I'm Steve O'Brien. Fill up your week with the Nice Guys. Have fun storming the castle, boys. Yeah, I don't mean to pry, but the nice guys don't by chance happen to have six fingers on their right hand, do they?